Hi, I'm going to use Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws to solve this circuit. So this circuit is not amenable to analysis by other methods such as series and parallel rules because no like circuit elements within this circuit are in series or in parallel. So we can't simplify it that way. We just have to use Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws, which can be a little bit tedious, but they are very versatile and they can solve a wide variety of circuits. So here's our circuit. We have three batteries, two resistors, uh, all with known properties. And the goal of this is to predict the current through all of the circuit elements. So the first thing I would do with this type of circuit is assign names and directions to each of the currents. So we have three branches in this circuit, so there's three going to be three different currents. And the direction is typically through the battery from the negative to the positive. Okay, so out of the positive into the negative, outside of the battery, from the negative to the positive terminal inside the battery. That's not always going to be true, but typically that's what happens. Okay, so I'm going to call the current in this branch, I'm going to call that current A. I'll draw a direction for that one, so I can give it a name, current A. And then the current through the middle branch, uh, which intuition suggests should go this way, will be current B. So we'll give that a label. And then the current going through this branch of the circuit, the right side, will be going from the negative to the positive inside the battery, so it'll be going up. And so the current here in this branch we'll call current C. Okay, so I've assigned names and directions to each of these currents. I'm going to first apply Kirchhoff's current law to a junction. Okay, so I can pick this junction here or this junction here. Doesn't really matter uh, matter which, but the summation of the currents going in has to match the summation of the currents going out. So at this junction, I have currents A and C going in. So uh, they will go on the right-hand side, or sorry, on the left-hand side. And then I have current B going out. So that will go on the right-hand side, okay? And we could do the junction here, but that basically gives us the same equation. So we're done with uh, Kirchhoff's current law. Now we have to use Kirchhoff's voltage law. So the, the idea with Kirchhoff's voltage law is that you go around in loops and you make as many loops as needed in order to cover all of the circuit elements at least once. So you have to include all of these circuit elements at least once in each of uh, your, in, in your equations for Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, so I'm going to do the, uh, the easiest one first. And the direction you choose is totally arbitrary. Um, but I'm going to be using Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that, uh, and there's different ways to write this, but the total voltage gains have to equal the total voltage losses. Okay? So I'm going to apply that to a series of loops. I'm going to start right here, just arbitrarily, and I'm going to go clockwise around the right-hand loop. Okay? And you might try this yourself. Pause the video. Um, start here. Go clockwise around the left-hand side of this loop, and then see if uh, you get an equation that looks like mine. Uh, based on uh, this convention for Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, so here goes. I'm going to uh, go from here from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. That's a gain, so that goes on the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, and then I'm going along a wire. Nothing happens, nothing happens, and I go through this resistor. I'm going with this resistor, or sorry, with the current through this resistor, so that's a drop in voltage. When you go with the current, you're going down. And so that goes on the right-hand side, and we can apply Ohm's law for the potential difference across this resistor. It will be IB times R1. Okay, and now I'm on uh, right here in my imaginary journey, and I go from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. That is also a gain, and so that goes on the left hand side. And then I just follow along the wire back to my starting point, so I'm done. I've finished uh, my loop. Okay, um, so the next thing to do will be to uh, get a loop that includes this portion here. Uh, we could do this right hand loop or we could do the outer loop. I'm going to pick the outer loop and I'm going to go uh, clockwise 
around this loop. We could go counterclockwise. Uh, we could do the right hand or right hand section or the outer section. Doesn't matter as long as we get these two circuit elements included in our our, our equations. Okay, so I'm gonna start here once again, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go clockwise. So uh, epsilon, and go ahead and pause the video if you want. You can try this yourself. So um, I go from the negative to the positive terminal. That's a gain. And then I'm going along the outside. And I'm going from the positive to the negative. So that's actually a drop in voltage. So positive to negative. That goes on the right-hand side. So epsilon 3. And then I'm going against the current through this resistor. That's a gain. So that goes on the left-hand side. That's a, when you go against the current, you're gaining voltage. So, and then applying Ohm's law, it will be current C times R2. Okay, so now I've done enough loops that I've covered all five circuit elements. And as it turns out, I have three equations, three unknowns. This isn't too bad to untangle. Sometimes with Kirchhoff's laws, it'll be a little bit a uh, little bit tedious, but this is actually uh, solvable. These two equations only have one unknown, so that there's no uh, complicated math there. And once we're done solving these, we can get uh, we can get the solution to uh, to this one. So I'll just solve this second equation first. So like I said before, goal is to find the currents. So all I have to do is divide by R1, and I have the current for B. So second equation, solve for the current. And then I can throw in uh, these numbers. So I would have uh, 9 plus 3 over, uh, over uh, 24. Oops, R2. R sorry, R1. Oops, R1. Sorry. And so R1 is 24. And I get that the current through B is half an amp. OK. And then I can solve this equation for uh, current C. So I'm going to skip a little bit of the algebra, but epsilon 3 minus epsilon 1 over R2 is going to give us the current through C. And so then it's the difference. 17 minus 9 divided by R2, which is 40, giving me 0.2 amps. Okay. And then it's a fairly simple matter now that we know uh, the current B and the current C. We should be able to solve for current A symbolically. The current through A will be the current through B minus the current through C. So throwing the numbers 0.5 and 0.2, I get 0.3 amps. Okay, so I'm basically done. I did uh, set up three equations, three unknowns using Kirchhoff's uh, current laws, uh, current and voltage laws. And then I uh, did the algebra solve for each of the currents, and, and I'm done. I've solved the circuit, and then I've predicted uh, what the current through each of these circuit elements would be. Okay? Uh, thanks for watching.